Hey, what's up, fellas? I'm Alicia Female Fan. Steve Alicia's here with the Blackberry Playbook Rims Tablet Entry for 2011. One that I still use even today. I'm going to show you how I do that. But also, we're going to go over why 2021 is the year. If you have one of these sitting around in a closet, if you have one in a drawer that you haven't powered up in years, get it back out and get it set back up in 2021. We're going to go over why all of that on this edition of Steve Lish's Tech. And we're back as always. Thank you so much to all the new subscribers inching ever so close to 2830 as of the taping of this video. If you love it, all the Blackberry stuff, go ahead and give that subscribe button a tussle. It certainly means a lot to me. So the playbook. A mid-early 2011 release from Research in Motion. Rather nice piece of hardware. A contemporary of the iPad 2. And to me, that's where the comparison should stop. Yes, they're both tablets. They're both portable form factors. But the use cases for both couldn't be more different. When you're talking about an iPad, you're talking about a big 10, 11-inch display designed for media consumption. You've got your movies, you've got television shows, websites, full pages, YouTube, whatever you're reading on there. You can have that kind of experience, those e-magazines. You can have that experience on your iPad. This, with its rather nice 7-inch display, is a companion device. This is a productivity device. This is not meant, I don't believe, as a standalone. If you're part of the BlackBerry, if you were part of the BlackBerry 10 ecosystem or just the BlackBerry 7 at that point as well ecosystem, this is something that you'd want to carry around in addition to your BlackBerry device, which is very different from the iPad. And if you get into what the iPad can do media-wise and then you compare it to this, it's, it's not the playing field that they should be on. This can do media. It does video. It does music you could put on there as a headphone jack. Quite nice. 1080p display. A little small, 7 inches. But then again, we're going to get to why that is. It wasn't a perfect device at launch. It's, it was a little on the slow side. But given what it was going to be used for, it wasn't the end of the world. They had some price issues as well. It wasn't necessarily priced as a companion device. But when they lowered it, they sold quite a bit more of them. And then there was the email debacle where they didn't have a standalone email on there. And that really reminds me, that's like when you when you got a group project, right? And there's a portion of it that someone everyone thinks everyone else is responsible for. It's like the email. I thought I thought Tommy was doing that. I thought I thought Chris was doing it. I thought Lisa was doing the email. And then you realize nobody did it. And you're like, oh, we gotta ship all these units. We gotta go gold master on the software. We don't have oh, we'll we'll send it out later. Don't worry about it. Third parties will handle it. It's fine. No big, no big deal. But let's talk about what it actually had and what I use it for and what it can be used for. This was, think about the time period. If you're 2011, 2012, 13, you're dealing with BlackBerry Bold 9900s. You're dealing with 2.7 inch displays, 3 inch displays. So if you have something like this and you're going to be in your office for a while, or let's say you're done for the day and you're at home. You basically take this off the cradle, you connect it with BlackBerry Bridge, which we'll show you in a moment, and you're able to do everything that you could do on your smaller device, but you're giving your eyeballs a break. You've been staring at that smaller screen all day. And listen, it was great at the time. It was a portable form factor. It was awesome to hold in the hand. It was very convenient. But if you're home sitting around, you're in your office, or you're on the your bus, or you're on the train, pull this out. And you could do the same thing, send your messages, send your emails, go through your BBMs, but do it on a nice, large display. And unlike an iPad, where that's a commitment when you want to bring it somewhere. If you want to bring your iPad, it's essentially the footprint of a laptop. The first one was a little on the heavy side. You have to put a case on it. It's fragile. And you really have to make a decision. When I get to the other end of where I'm going, do I need this iPad or not? This, you don't need that. It's rugged, okay? It's got the back of what you'd feel like a BlackBerry Passport has. 
that rubberized material that was so great on blackberries. Durable. You could throw this in a messenger bag, throw it in a backpack, not have to worry about it. Not have to worry about whether you need it or not. It's a great presentation, you see. You have HDI, mini HDI out. So you were getting video out of this thing, which was a major advantage for business presentations. You bring this to a meeting and you have your PDFs on there and you could go to town. So it did have some utility other than just some media consumption device. A lot of companion apps that you could have on here that worked wonderfully. Now, we're going to show you what I do with it. I take it off my cradle, which, by the way, I got. See, I got this new old stock on eBay for about 40 bucks. I think it was about four years ago. And at the same time, I went on Amazon. I got one of these guys. Well, it's really dusty guys, but I got one of these. The magnetic charger at the bottom. You can see how there's two ports there. There's the micro USB, but also this magnetic charging port. You plop it right on there. And you plug it into just regular power. And let's see if you pull that forward. And you're charging. And I've had this on my desk for the entire time that I've owned it. And now apparently they're relatively rare to find. Y y people are having a hard time for this. But 16 bucks, I was lucky enough to get it on eBay. And I love it. Rubberized bottom. And it's able to hold there just fine. But keep this charged up. So we've got the playbook. Put this over to the side. Our trusty passport, which of course is going to have a SIM in it. So let's go ahead, and we, the, these are already linked, okay? So they'll, you can link it up, Bluetooth, your BlackBerry Bridge, you're all set to go. So I'm going to go on here, on my playbook, and this is going to be my messenger list that I currently have open. So I'm going to click on my iPhone that I have there, and we're going to send a message. Very complex one, hello. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and send that. And then we're going to wait over here. And there it is. And we got the message. And that's connected and that's sending that through my passport that has the SIM in it. And you link it up. So it's essentially iMessage for the BBOS user environment, which is, is, is really neat. And this was before iMessage, by the way. iMessage was iOS 5, I think. So this was a lot of stuff that you find in BlackBerry OS you found well before other places. You know, someone left a comment last night on one of the videos, I think talking about the classic, about how at the time everybody made fun of the swipe gestures that were BlackBerry was using in their OS, and now look at where we are today. And it couldn't be more true. You know, you got to Android 10 for swipe gestures, and then you had iOS, your iPhone 10 for your swipe gestures on iOS, but this was happening well before that. And just as intuitive then as it is now. So there were a lot of features in BlackBerry OS that were ahead of its time. And that one, the BlackBerry Bridge, is one of them. Because that, to me, is awesome. And it's instantaneous. If I get a message back, so let's go ahead and send a message back from the iPhone. And you're going to see how, how quickly it comes back up. I'll send hello back. There you go. And I just sent that. We got the message. You got the little notification, LED notification. So if you have it up on your desk like I do on the charger, you can see right away if you have a text message or an email. It's still, the the, crack, uh, the uh, BlackBerry world still works. So I have the CrackBerry forums on there. I have Reddit on here. Both of those work well. Uh, you can connect it to Wi-Fi. There was the LTE version. This is not that, but works well here. Kind of scroll through. Reddit, you could sign in just fine. Your BlackBerry world apps are going to work that still work on it just fine. So it, it gives some utility even today. It's just a cool thing to have. Because of the build quality. If you're still using BlackBerry OS, you can link it up. But the reason why you want to power one of these up right now in 2021 is because come next year, January 4th, they're shutting down the servers. And if you haven't powered this guy up in a while, the, the, the tendency, at least on mine, is that when it's powered off for a long time, and even if you try to plug it in, it gets into a boot loop. There's the OS corrupts. And it just gets this endless cycle and you'll never get it booted up again. But the great thing is, is because it's still sort of supported, the servers are still on. You could get the BlackBerry desktop companion app on your PC. You could plug this in. It'll recognize it. 
and it'll rebuild it for you if you want to just completely reset it and start over again. It'll download any updates. It'll get the most recent version of the OS on it from the BlackBerry Companion app. Very useful. But, but, you can't be counting on that come next January. It's going to be it. Those servers are shutting down. So that software, unless there's other people that are willing to, to pick that up, is going to be gone forever. And you, so will the usability of your playbook. So if you had one, if you loved it, if you still got a BlackBerry Classic, or even if you, a lot of, a lot of you are still using the Bold 9900. Uh, some of you just getting curves. If you have, you, have, you have a Passport, obviously, pick yourself up one of these cheap and use it around the house. Put it on a on a cradle, or whatever, and forget about it. And then just when you're when you're done texting or, or you come home for the day, plug your BlackBerry in to get charged. Carry this around, and you get that connectivity that's just really neat on a bigger display. And I think that's what really people lost on it. They didn't think of it as a bigger BlackBerry that provides you the same functionality as your mobile device. They just thought of it as a smaller, less capable iPad, which really I think hurt it. If you think about it for what it was and what it could do in addition to your Passport Classic as a companion app, you really saw the usability and the utility of something like this. It's a shame they didn't carry it forward. Shame they gave up on it as soon as they did. Would have been interesting to see future versions of it with BlackBerry 10 and what they could do and maybe some adding some Android apps in there. But this is what we have. Pull it out of the closet. Get it out of that drawer. Power it up. If you're in the boot loop, like I said, get the companion app. Get it back on there. Whatever you got to do. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe. All that fun stuff. Until next time. Have that Steve Delicious day.